Hello friends, so a lot to talk about today regarding Greece and Turkey, like I said, this beast of the book of Revelation in chapter 13 arises out of the sea and in my previous messages, as you know, I've talked a lot about that, I've mentioned, we've gone through maps, previous empires, we've looked in the book of Daniel, back and forth in the book of Revelation, to see the nature of this beast and the bible gives us a lot of information if this beast is rising up out of the sea and that sea being according to daniel chapter 2 and revelation chapter 13 being the sea which was at the time the great sea also known as in modern day the mediterranean we expect this entity to soon form its empire excuse me if you check out the latest news is it's basically really really escalating and it's not looking good why erdogan might choose a war with greece at european summit erdogan says nothing to discuss with greece before i go to those news articles And before I share the scripture, which I will close the video with, I think it's important to listen to the wonderful audio Bible, chapter, uh, I believe I've got chapter one of the book of Revelation. I'll close with that and it's wonderful to listen to. Please don't miss it. So stay with me till the end. Basically, we've got, let me look at my notes, Greece and Turkey, two NATO allies, right? However, they are also historic foes. They're both accusing each other of undermining regional <clears throat> peace and stability. I'm so sorry. So recently, Greece has been under constant threats. This is Greece's perspective. Greece is under constant threats from Turkey with the use of military force, with the argument that the island should not be militarized, right? That's what Turkey is saying. But Greece believes, due to the current situation, this sort of intimidation, uh, intimidating rhetoric that's coming out from Erdogan, that it is under threat from Turkey. And therefore, Greece has the right to militarize their island in line with the UN charters. The problem is, though, Turkish military provocations and intimidations is proving to Greece that Turkey is actually willing to go a step further and use military force to obtain by force political gains. As in what happened in the Cyprus island. This map, I took screenshots from Al Jazeera because when I'm listening to news reports, and they show the visual aids, I'm very quick to take a screenshot so I can share with you, my friends. So as you can see, these are the areas, the islands that are being disputed right now, okay? Turkey recently told the US that its weapons should not be used in breach of the island's agreed status, which he believes, and Turkey holds to, that the Greek islands have to be demilitarized. When you look at other images online of this region, it's crazy, it's so complicated, but take a good look at some of these images that I've got. It's, it's amazing to me, friends, for, for the longest time, from let's say 2003, 2004, when the Lord revealed to me by revelation, that Turkey is the nation to watch out for in terms of the rise of the Antichrist because in those days I was closely examining the view that majority of Bible prophecy land believe which is the revival of the Roman Empire which will usher in the Antichrist that never made any sense to me so in my own personal prayer and seeking the Lord for three days I fasted the Lord revealed to me Turkey and when that revelation came it was like it was completely um, 
out of the blue. It was like, <clears throat> right, Turkey? Okay, how, why, Turkey? And then from then on, I began to understand, by the help of the Lord, the significance of the Ottoman Empire. Now, let's go back to these maps. As you can see, the markings, the boundaries, the disputed lines, and it's all over natural resources, which is one of the main reasons, friends, this Gog Magog coalition forms in order to invade Israel and Sheba and Dedan. We believe it's Sheba and Dedan also because of the reference of Sheba and Dedan in the book of Ezekiel chapter 38. When Sheba and Dedan say, have you come to take booty? So we connect the dots and we know, if you checked out my previous messages, I showed you in, in, I think it was a short video I did, a couple of videos, I showed you how Turkey has military bases in Somalia and in Sudan and how it strategically located those military bases for the time of the Gog and Magog invasion, when that time comes, right? So, if you look at this map here, you can see how this beast is going to rise. It's out of the Mediterranean. So, the power or the country that controls, in, by majority, has control and influence over these waters, I believe is going to be the Antichrist the one who leads the coalition and heads the coalition of those ten kings, the ten horns. Interesting. So these EEZs or EEZ, the exclusive economic zones of both Libya and Turkey has just recently been signed. They've just signed a deal. I'll, I'm not going to go into that. I'm going to save it for my next message because there's more to talk about. Greeks claims in the Eastern Mediterranean, you see. Greece has asked the UN, the EU and NATO to condemn Turkey's provocations. Even the ambassador of Greece had written... A note to the United Nations warning against selling weapons to Turkey and I, I think they kind of fell on deaf ears. Turkey Libya recently signed an agreement on the natural gas energy sharing hydrocarbon exploration bilateral deal and a lot of these nations for example the US the EU Greece and Egypt have criticized it and they said that this deal will destabilize the uh, the region that the agreement could violate greek sovereignty over the aegean sea because right now majority of these islands belong to greece under greek sovereignty but the one is referring to the lausanne treaty which was agreed upon in 1923 but there was another one after that the paris treaty 1947 i'm mentioning those treaties so you can in your own time go and study if you're interested and research a little more to what is the significance of those treaties because when these nation leaders bring up these former treaties they're saying according to those boundaries you ought to be demilitarized and so this conflict is two nations butting heads over these former treaties and it's going to escalate this conflict that i mentioned in my last video between azerbaijan and armenia is also happening at the very same time so when we talk about this beast that is rising there's a lot of things that are happening in tandem all at the same time. Does that make sense? In Revelation 13, it says, verse 1, let's repeat these scriptures one more time. 
Then I stood in the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea. So it was a literal sea that John was stood by. Out of this sea, this beast is rising, but it has seven heads. <clears throat> I don't have the chart available right now, but I'm going to read out to you those seven heads. I love using visual aids and I completely forgot to bring that one up. So let me just remind you of what those seven heads are. They're mentioned also in Revelation chapter 12. But again, they're mentioned in chapter 17 of Revelation. And those seven are the Egyptian Empire, the Assyrian, the Babylonian, number four, Medo-Persian, number five, the Greek, number six, the Roman Empire, and number seven, what came after Rome, was the Ottoman Empire that conquered and took over that region. Since then... There hasn't been a unified empire that has control over that region entirely unless there is a revival of one of those former empires that come together in the last days, which I believe what this scripture is telling us about. So having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name, now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. Uh, one of the ways where, in my understanding, <clears throat> I conclude that these are the same entities mentioned in Daniel chapter 2, are because in the days of these kings, the kingdom of Christ comes down and destroys the beast and brings down all of its kingdom. The reference, the imagery that I have, let me just bring that up to you, for you here, is that statue of Nebuchadnezzar. We've gone over it many times, right? The Babylonian, the Medo-Persian, the Greco-Roman I've put there, you could call it the Greek or the Greek Empire. The metals are the gold, the silver and the bronze. And the final portion are those iron legs, which I believe is the Islamic Empire. And the division of the two legs being the Sunni and the Shia kingdoms of Islam, the Caliphates. However, the ten kings of both iron and clay have not yet been revealed but i believe we are living in those days now friends where it's not that far off <clears throat> let's continue to read the dragon gave him his power his throne and great authority <clears throat> And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. Are we seeing this deadly wound? It's not a literal wound, and I think I'll have to do a separate video on that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because some people believe that the literal wound of the head was Nimrod and Perhaps I will do a separate video on that. This is a head wound, a kingdom, an entity, an empire that received a deadly wound as if it had been mortally wounded. And his deadly wound was healed and all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast and they worshipped the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? This entity will be ferocious. Now, let me go back to some of these articles that just, I'm just stunned when I see these headlines. Like, we expect certain things to happen according to the scriptures, right? 
certain things have to happen in order for these scriptures proving to us increasing our faith knowing that my goodness is happening the word of god foretold certain things that would happen and in such a manner that we've been given so much information in different books of the bible to show us this time that we are about to enter into friends greece says to its allies crack down on turkey or risk another ukraine the war of words escalates between athens and angara as erdogan issues threats let me go back to my notes because i don't want to forget what i wrote i wrote them down for a reason most of the east mediterranean islands belong to greece the greek islands have us military bases stationed there and turkey wants to revive because it's almost 100 years since the lausanne treaty 1923 by next year it's 2023 so you've got this 100 years period where the revival of the ottoman empire this vision is really being um they're pushing everything they can to realize that ambition so turkey is also claiming that greece's militarization backed by the us is preventing turkey from rising Erdogan recently said that the Greek Prime Minister no longer exists for him. So he's discarding the leader of Greece as a person, as an individual, as a leader of a sovereign nation. The Greek Prime Minister no longer exists, according to Erdogan. He's also said Turkey will invade in the middle of the night i'm paraphrasing i probably got his his quote wrong greece seeking u.s help against turkey won't stop turkey he said that most recently i believe it was yesterday there's also a speech where it said that NATO and the EU needs Turkey more than Turkey needs NATO or the EU. Especially when you think of the membership, NATO membership for Finland and Sweden. The West needs Turkey as a mediator. Turkey has been carefully playing a balancing act here, friends. Let's read a bit of this article. Greece says that Europe risks another Ukraine situation if it doesn't put an end to Turkey's inflammatory rhetoric towards Athens. Earlier this week, the Greek foreign minister sent letters to NATO, the United Nations and the EU complaining about comments by other one that it said were unprovoked, unacceptable and an insult against Greece and the Greek people and asking the organisations to condemn Angara's behaviour. There's too much at stake. By not doing so in time or by underestimating the seriousness of the matter, we risk witnessing again a situation similar to that currently unfolding in some other part of our continent. Greek Foreign Minister wrote in the letters dated Monday and Tuesday alluding to the ongoing Russian invasion of Ukraine. Erdogan has stepped up his rhetoric against Greece in recent days amid what Angara sees as a growing military build-up on the Greek Aegean islands close to Turkey's coastline. In a repeated thinly veiled threat he said we can come down suddenly one night when the time comes. So that was what he actually said. They have islands in their possession. They have bases on these islands. If illegitimate threats against us continue based on them, our patience has a limit, he said Tuesday, during a visit to Bosnia and Herzegovina. Greece slammed other one's remarks as openly threatening in nature and tone. You know, the ball has already begun rolling and it's, it's going to pick up momentum. And there's going to be nothing that's going to stop it, friends. 
So it's another season where we're going to have to brace ourselves. Like things are not bad enough already as they are. Turkey has been carefully playing a balancing act. It's been between Russia and Ukraine and this balancing act very, very carefully between East and the West, between the North and the South. I'm talking about Iran, China, Israel, Saudi Arabia, Russia. This Greek and Turkish war, friends, will tear apart NATO, most likely. There's more notes that I've got that I want to share. <clears throat> Let me move on. Greece warns Turkey on illegal drilling. This was the day before yesterday. Greece is warning it is ready to use all its diplomatic and military might to defend its sovereignty against what it calls hostile plans by its historic foe, Turkey. The direct warning follows a controversial energy deal Turkey recently signed with an element of Libya's divided government. And I'll, I'll, I'm going to reserve that for my next message. There's a lot, a lot that I want to share with you and I want to get into the book of Ezekiel. But the tensions that have been building up recently between the two NATO allies is sparking fears of a crisis that could spill out of control and destabilize the military alliance. Turkey's many identities, both real and imagined, coexist and are instrumentalized as necessary to the West. Turkey presents itself as a bulwark against Russia and with Russia, it is a part of Eurasia. In North Africa and the Middle East, it focuses on its Islamic role. And in Central Asia, Turkey highlights the significance of its Turkic heritage and in the balkans it places the ottoman past center stage so today these multiple identities that turkey allows is providing turkey a strategic seat on the fence this was earlier during this meeting the european political community meeting that just took place in Prague other one says <clears throat> in this article let's read there's nothing worth discussing with Greece at the moment other one said as he warned that Turkey may retaliate against Athens violations there's, I mean there's a lot of rhetoric going back and forth right now it's possible that they restrain and continue to talk Erdogan has clearly said several times he does not consider it worth it to discuss anything with the Greek leader <laughs> How, so what can you do speaking at the inaugural meeting of the European political community Erdogan criticised Athens for basing its policies on lies I mean this is terrible times coming when I read these articles and I go back in the scriptures, I'm like, my goodness, are we there already? How much worse is it going to get <clears throat> before the beast arises? This is stuff that's got to happen before we see this entity form, friends. Erdogan said, Athens understood Angara's message when Turkish officials said, we may suddenly arrive one night, a comment that Greek and some other Western officials have criticized as a threat to a neighboring state. The president also said he expects the EU to call on Greece for dialogue on a bilateral basis instead of supporting illegal initiatives masquerading as unity or solidarity. Why is that? Because of the weapons. <laughs> The weapon sales. A very interesting article here. Take a look at that map there for a moment. <clears throat> Showing Germany selling weapons to Turkey and they've got a deal there. And showing France supporting Greece selling weapons to Greece. This article, although very long, is very well written, very well explained to help us understand how this conflict is actually being encouraged 
how the EU weapon sales are stoking an arms race between, between Greece and Turkey. And this was written several months earlier this year. As Russia's invasion of Ukraine rages on its doorstep, the EU, for the first time in its history, tries to emerge and failed miserably as a unified military power. And yet the two biggest power, powers of the Union fanned the flames of war in Europe. At the southeastern edge of the continent, Greece and Turkey, both NATO members, appeared to come close to war in 2020. Germany and France, key allies of both, sell weapons worth billions to both countries in return for their political support in the conflict. This is similar to what Israel supports Azerbaijan because Israel wants to appease Turkey to a degree, which is also able to restrain or contain Iran, which is a, a huge threat to Israel. I want to scroll down because I'm not going to read all of this. I want to scroll down. I want to show you something that this article says. Do you see that? I mean, seriously, come on, you guys, to tame the beast. Is this prophetically written? And this person had no idea what he actually wrote. To tame the beast. The Greek leader did not refer to neighboring Turkey by name in his address. There was no need to. It's an unspoken assumption shared by all those present at the ceremony that Greece's latest arms buying spree is directly related once again to the perceived threat from its neighbour. This despite the fact that it has been less than a decade since Greece narrowly avoided bankruptcy. For policymakers and experts, there's a direct causal link between expensive arm purchases and bankruptcy. <clears throat> We are not a big country, said the Greek foreign minister in January, yet we have more heavy tanks than Germany and France together. We have one of the biggest, if not the biggest, air force of Europe. This is Greece. We have more than 250 fighter planes and we are not the biggest economy in Europe setting the foundation as to the reason why they are so heavily armed militarily. Why does a country which represents just 0.25% of the world's GDP spend more on defence than military superpowers? Why do we need that? Dendi has pondered. Because we face the threat. The invasion of Ukraine by Russia has struck a familiar chord in Athens, which has long warned about the threat of aggression from a stronger neighbour. Greece and Turkey are allies within NATO, yet this hasn't stopped them from reaching the brink of armed conflict several times in recent years, proving NATO is also useless. Since the Turkish invasion of Cyprus in 74, I want to read this portion because it repeats that phrase that was just subheaded there. Relations between Athens and Angola have gone through several serious crises because of their differences over the Aegean and the Eastern Mediterranean. Greece joining the EU, its NATO membership, its defence spending, its support for Turkey's EU ascension, all of these actions are part of a strategy which aims to deter aggressive behaviour on the part of EU to tame the beast. Now, in the scriptures, friends, we know that there are angelic beings, the angelic hosts, the holy ones, God's holy angels, who are a restraining force in the heavenly realm. I did a message about the restrainer of the dragon. It's about over two years old now, very old. It's worth checking out because this spiritual warfare is continuing and it's very intense right now. They're trying to tame this beast in the natural right hold it back be a restraining 
force to a degree. But when those angelic beings, let's say Michael, the angel, casts out the dragon to the earth. Shall we read that? Let's read that. Revelation. Let's go to chapter 12. Let's scroll down. <clears throat> I believe Michael is the restrainer. I believe Michael is the restrainer and this intense warfare is going to come to the point when this scripture is going to be realized. It's going to come to pass, that's what I mean. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought but they did not prevail, nor was the place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out. He was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. How glorious! Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. And because he knows he has a short time, now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child, Israel being the woman. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness to a place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time. From the presence of the serpent, I believe that wilderness is in Arabia. So the, I did a separate video on that. <laughs> it's... a. It's quite old, but it was earlier this year. Please go back and check in my upload section. I did a video on the woman in the wilderness and it's in Arabia. Let me continue. Verse 15. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. I'm reading on a lot more than what I anticipated. Let's read on some more. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to, to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And then when we go to the following chapter... Revelation 13 gives us more information. It's the same narrative, friends, but it's more information. What is it going to look like when this entity comes down? What will it do? What does it actually achieve? And therefore, we read in Revelation 13 that this dragon is the beast. The beast has those same seven heads and ten horns that the dragon did in chapter 12. So this is an entity that is going to consolidate former empires, the regional boundaries, the people groups, the languages and their natural resources and become a ferocious entity. Right? Now, where was I? To tame the beast. To tame the beast 
is not something for mere man. No mere human can tame the dragon, the beast. This is the work of the angels in heaven. So this is showing me, reading these articles, it's getting intense. The spiritual warfare is intensifying. This is why we're going to see it overflowing out in our world shortly. I read the article. Let me move on to the next one. To show you, hopefully I read my notes in my last video. To show you how the Lord helps with this understanding. How he gives me the understanding to see it. The arrowhead, remember. Turkey's influence grows as Putin's crisis deepens. In my last message, I think, well, how did I word it? A weakened Russia is a stronger Turkey. And Turkey is filling in the vacuum that Russia is going to leave behind in Syria and in Libya and in Armenia. Difficult times are coming. Turkey is poised to become an increasingly influential Eurasian power as Russia faces mounting international pressure and domestic turmoil. Angara will gain new allies in the North and South Caucasus and Central Asia and among numerous Turkic-speaking people trapped in the Russian Confederation. They will come to see Turkey as their most important political, economic and security link. And I believe, and I'm going to save this for my upcoming video, one of them, because it deserves its own separate video. <clears throat> <coughs> this Chechen military leader Ramzan Kadyrov and his military his army I believe we're going to see a time when even they will come under Turkey I believe other ones got away with his words and I believe they're going to find a way to work together when we see Russia dwindle in its power and in its autonomy in the region. So we see Russia pull back and out and Turkey stepping in and stepping in quickly. They will come to see Turkey as the most important political, economic and security link. Moscow's plans to dominate Eurasia are failing. The Eurasian Economic Union, a pale imitation of the EU, brings few material benefits, while the Kremlin-dominated Collective Security Treaty Organization, a supposed counterpart to NATO, is incapable of defending its own members, i.e. Armenia in Central Asia and the Caucasus, and is viewed as a cover for Russian dominance. Not only has this Collective Security Treaty Organization let down Armenia, but two other members, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan, are actually in conflict with each other also. So this organization has failed. NATO has failed. The EU has failed. All these world governments that have tried to govern their people and their regions, all of them have largely failed. Is telling us humans are not capable of ruling righteously. So we look up and we look upward and we say, Come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem and we ask the Lord to please come quickly to set up your throne and your kingdom and rule the nations with the rod of iron. Come, Lord Jesus, and make your enemies your footstool. Can I get an amen? Another article that I thought was so good, I wanted to share it with you, but it's so long. It gives a lot of information. And this admiral, vice admiral, who's retired, is Greek, wrote a very good paper earlier last month let's see how much i can get through 
Turkey's blue homeland ambitions why Europe can't afford to sit on the fence, but Turkey can. Turkey has been playing the long game, you guys. Talking about, as a nation, as a country, a hundred years, you see. <clears throat> and when this thing forms, the ten horns, is going to, at that moment, it's going to happen quickly. That's what I've said before. That's how I see it happening. I could be wrong. I don't know, friends, how many more years we've got. Do we have ten years or less? We shall see. I also want to do a message on Saudi Arabia and Russia. There's a lot going on there as well. But Saudi Arabia particularly. There's a lot to share with you. So bear with me. The next coming days as I put these um, presentations together. I'm hoping that you're finding these valuable friends honestly. The Turkish government dreams of revitalized turkish influence across three continents as such angara is pursuing a radical revision of the regional status quo by projecting power in neighboring regions with increasing aggression and disregard for international legality this is what i expect if we read revelations and we read chapter 13 the one that i read a lot <laughs> I expect this to be a fact. I expect these events to unfold. And when they do, it's like, aha, uh -huh, now we know where we are in the timeline in Bible prophecy. Right? It's a, it's a encouragement. It should in encourage us and increase our faith. This is culminating in Turkey's blue homeland ambitions. The idea that Turkey should reclaim mercantile and maritime power in the mediterranean because it wants to rise as a political superpower economic superpower there's something else i wrote in my notes where did i put that one moment um i was okay so this is what i wrote earlier today let me go back to my notes and let me just show you <clears throat> I mean just looking i don't have that map but just looking at this region oh my goodness friends wow the beast the antichrist beast the enemy of christ the system the enemy of jerusalem of the woman and her offspring is regional it's local but it will have global ramifications this conflict that we're seeing between Turkey and Greece will also impact China. I believe China may even get involved to support Turkey. Why do I say that? Because Turkey is a key nation to China's economic <clears throat> and commercial land shipments, which it plans to get to Europe due to turkey's location and bridges that connect the two continents east and west right right there china <clears throat> may very well get involved a u.s backed war between greece and turkey could prevent china from experiencing a huge blow and setback in terms of its um, large projects, such as the One Belt and Road Initiative, military bases, within the territory of Greece, considered by Turkey and China an outpost of the US, right? Those U.S. military bases in the Greek islands is a problem for Turkey. And I believe we can also get dragged into this conflict as well. Considered as an enemy, a provocator, right? The U.S. So it's likely that the U.S. will be seen as a provocator 
and also these US military bases a threat to non-NATO countries as well. So Turkey's influence will continue to grow while Russia's crisis is deepening. So there's major conflicts going on in this region. Azerbaijan and Armenia, Russia and Ukraine, and now Turkey and Greece, and then China and Taiwan. Turkey, involvement in Syria, don't forget. The river Euphrates runs through Turkey, Iraq, Syria. That is a one of the clear indications of where the power, the evil power of the dragon, the beast and the false prophet come out from, from the river Euphrates. So Turkey's invasion of Syria is not a surprise either. There's a lot of conflict going on in this region. This is intense conflict. I mean, the most wicked place right now. There's a lot of bloodshed taking place here. I mean... It's so complicated, friends. Everyone's got a stake in this region. So we should have to keep our eyes peeled as to what takes place here and, and what actually happens with Turkey and Russia in Syria. Very complicated. If you just zoom in and look at the map here, what on earth? <clears throat> Political map of Syria, the unofficial partition. It's an invasion, isn't it? Turkey wants its buffer zones. That's why I, I had some notes written about that. Let me see if I can go and find them. In fact, I'll just move on from here. I'll move on from here. There's another map I wanted to share with you. Turkey's expanding military reach. Places where the country's armed forces have a presence. Afghanistan is there. Part of the US-led campaign against the Taliban based in Kabul. Turkey also has a presence in Azerbaijan. He has units present in Baku, the capital, by the Aegean Sea there. In Libya, units present in Tripoli, North Cyprus, in Syria, in Iraq. Overseas military bases of Turkey. And like I said in, in older messages, I shared with you the military bases of Turkey is, is a big one in Somalia and it's a growing one in Sudan also. So the Gog Magog alliance is going to form eventually, but you can see how it's been growing in the backdrop slowly, strategically over time. It's not something that's just going to appear overnight, friends. These things take time. They take decades by the time it's ready, when it's ready, that moment, when God's timing is here, then we will know, we'll see it, if we are alive to witness it, and I believe many of us will be. Okay, I won't continue to read you more of that, because there's so much more, well perhaps I could oh, scroll some more. In... This article here, where it talked about the weapons. Let me see if I can go and find it. No, not that one. It's this one here. Right. Let me show you the maps. I'm glad I remembered. I think it's important to see visually how these nations support their side, their team with weapons. Here we go. <clears throat> Take a look at this. On the left and on the right, on the left column, you've got the weapons transfers to Turkey. And on the right, you've got weapons transfers to Greece in the same period between 1980 and 2020. Let's take a look. 
transfers of major conventional weapons to Turkey in the period 1980 to 2020. I wonder if I can zoom in some more. We're going to focus on the left now. Total amount. Right, let's have a look. I mean, it amounts to millions. So if you have a look, majority of these weapons transfers to Turkey came from the US, right? The amounts are in millions. Wow, goodness. Second in line, Germany. Following behind Germany is the UK, the United Kingdom. And then Italy, South Korea, Spain, and it just dwindles and dwindles and dwindles. And at the very end, you've got China there. Let's take a look at Greece. On the right column, US. My goodness, friends. This is not good. Germany, right behind. And France. Think about these leaders when... They support one nation over the over the other nation. Like India right now is helping Armenia with sales of weapons because India is looking ahead and foreseeing a military um, alliance forming between Turkey, Azerbaijan and Pakistan. The three brothers has been very strategic with its support to Armenia right now militarily. Because if they don't try to contain this threat now, then it will be too difficult to contain it later on. But friends, we already know what the Bible says. It's going to be too late. When the beast forms, there's nothing nobody's going to be able to do to contain the beast. That's why it takes the Lord Jesus to come and to deal with it himself. I'm going to share with you now in ending or in closing... The Bible, Revelation chapter 1. Because I could be here a long, long time. But I want to divide my videos up in least reasonable length. So it's easier to digest. And so I don't lose your attention. I'll be back again soon. I've got several messages I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about Iran. I'll touch on the protests that have been happening there. But there's also... Saudi Arabia I want to speak to you about and Lebanon there's so much happening isn't there friends but let me stop talking now <laughs> and I'll ask you to please remember to give me a thumbs up and to please share my message I'll be back again soon let's listen to the word of God in Revelation chapter 1 I hope it blesses you pray for the region friends pray, pray for the region that the people of God will really get into the word and draw closer to the lord because we're going to need his help his strength and his courage for the days to head for the days ahead in jesus name the revelation of jesus christ the revelation of jesus christ which god gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place and he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ to all things that he saw. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, who is and who was 
and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet. I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet, and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went a sharp, two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me. Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Write the things which you have seen and the things which are and the things which will take place after this. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches.